so here i am going to do the experiment on inverse square law so you can see uh, this is the gm counter and this is the source holder uh, and gm tube detector and uh, the here i am using a uh, source so that is bismuth so first we should uh, understand what is inverse square law so uh, here the inverse square law for nuclear radiation uh, we are verifying uh, the inverse square law and uh, also we are going to determine the source strength so the apparatus we require here are gm tube counting system beta source okay stopwatch is not necessary we can just set the preset time here um, theory of this experiment you have to read so as we know according to inverse square law intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance so as the distance increases uh, the intensity is going to decrease uh, twice of that distance so here uh, are the some formulas you require uh, to do this experiment so the source strength uh, you have to calculate so this is the formula to calculate source strength so first thing uh, here you can see the nature of graphs uh, for this experiment there are four nature of graphs first is for operating voltage uh, again uh, using intensity and the distance we have uh, here three graphs so first what you have to do write down the observation for operating voltage uh, of the gm counter already in the previous video i have explained about how to measure the uh, or how to determine the operating voltage of this given gm counter so it is uh, 540 volt operating voltage of the gm counter so you can just go to the previous video so this is tabular column one is for operating voltage so then in the next part two is very important intensity as a function of distance uh, we have to measure here so for that source we require bismuth operating voltage as i said 540 paralysis time uh, we have to keep it 250 microsecond so here i am going to keep the paralysis time uh, and also preset time we have to set it for uh, 150 so here are the keys to give the input here so here it uh, must be 150 for uh, the second part that is intensity as a function of distance so just you can use this key to move the arrow so make it one and 150 as i said so this must be 5 Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. So we have given the preset time one fifty seconds. Then uh, voltage uh, you can set using this knob that is five forty. Slowly you have to increase the voltage. Okay, five forty. so the next is uh, uh, paralysis time we have to keep it 250 okay it is off so just use this key to set a paralysis time to 50 and then say store okay and a background count you require for the calculation so without source you have to take background count for 150 second so here i am just uh, taking this source outside so without source just you can start this program so you have to note down the background counts for 150 second so after uh, getting the background counts they got 53 counts for 150 second uh, then uh, then you can calculate the background count rate so this is helpful for the calculation so in the tabular column 
you can see here uh, in the first column you have to write down the distance uh, you can take up to 6 cm so 1.5 to each time you have to increase 0.5 distance so here I am going to keep the source in the second slot so that the distance from the detector it must be 1.5 okay so the next what you have to do you have to measure the counts n1 for 30 seconds so then again you have to set the preset time to 30 seconds and start taking reading so for background counts measurement we kept uh, at 150 seconds so now i am going to change it to 30 seconds so 30 then use this key and make it 0 ok then say store then uh, you can see I kept it at uh, second floor that is 1.5 cm away from the detector uh, so first reading we can start here So for 30 seconds how many counts you will get for 30 seconds you can uh, note down for the 540 operating voltage. Okay, we got around uh, 1,000, 18,000. Uh, so, how much you will get for 30 seconds, you should note down the values. So, here they got for 1.5 centimeter uh, distance from the detector. So, 14,191. So, for the same uh, distance, you have to uh, note down again uh, the N2 value. You can see here N1 for the same 1.5 distance so measure the counts and uh, for 30 seconds and repeat same procedure for uh, n2 that is for 1.5 centimeter 30 second note down the reading and after that uh, you have to just go for uh, this distance of 2 centimeter then repeat uh, this procedure uh, measure n1 and n2 but here you have to uh, set the preset time at 40 second okay um for 40 seconds how many counts you will get write down n1 and n2 so like that you have to increase the distance of the source uh, from the detector and go for up to 6 centimeter and note down the values of n1 and n2 how many counts you will get just note down the values uh, for up to 6 centimeter each time you have to increase 0.5 centimeter so after that, uh, after uh, writing the readings for N1 and N2, you have the calculation here. So counts I1 is equal to N1 minus B, background counts divided by time. So I1 intensity you are going to get here. And similarly I2, using this formula you can calculate. I star that is average of I1 plus I2, that is mean count rate. Uh, you will get okay so after calculating uh, the mean count rate next thing is um, you have to go for tabular column 3 here so as we know already paralysis time we kept for 250 microseconds then uh, the measured distance you can take it as xi and uh, the mean count rate uh, that you can uh, write down uh, in the second column and further uh, you have to do the calculation here background count is uh, that is i star minus b you have to do i prime you will get dead time correction uh, calculation you can do in this column using this formula i prime divided by 1 minus i prime t then uh, 
so in this column you have to take the root of i that time correction what you have calculated take one by root i you can just um, write it as y i so distance x i then you can use lsf method for uh, the next calculation so using lsf method uh, you just try uh, you can calculate uh, the values of p q r s okay so lsf method is required for this calculation then you can calculate slope and intercept okay and standard deviation formulas uh, you must know for the calculation of slope intercept and standard deviation using lsf method so tabular column is um, helpful for the uh, calculation of 1 over root i so after that uh, you can go for error in slope then error in intercept okay after calculating that uh, here uh, so after that what you have to do you have to plot the already you know how to draw the graph for operating voltage okay applied voltage versus counts uh, so so the in the next graph you have to plot the graph of 1 over root i that is intensity 1 over root i versus uh, distance d okay so here uh, d naught value oh, that is uh, 0.5 you can take uh, then you can plot the graph you, you will get the linear straight line so you will get the uh, graph of 1 over root i versus d uh, for the, the third tabular column so in the next tabular column fourth one what you have to do write down the d naught value that is 0.5 and uh, r is equal to d plus d naught so each time you are going to increase 0.5 uh, so here corrected distance that is equal to d plus d naught 1.5 plus 0.5 how much 2 so just write down uh, in this uh, first column corrected distance then corrected intensity you have calculated from tabular column 3 just write down that value here you can see the corrected time uh, okay you have to write down this column in the tabular column 4 then uh, you have to take log of i log of r in the next columns then again uh, you how to use lsf method for tabular column 4 also okay what changes you have made here d naught uh, you have added to the distance so that is corrected distance corrected intensity you have taken then log of i log of r you can consider it as xi and yi use lsf method for uh, the next calculation and here one more column is there 1 over r square that is 1 divided by square of the distance that is according to inverse square law you have to calculate in this column for the corrected distance okay so go for lsf method and calculate all the values here also you can calculate the slope intercept standard deviation and error in slope for the um, tabular column for for the corrected distance so error in intercept also you should calculate after after that you have to plot the graph of log i versus log r so you can see the graph uh, it is also a straight line um, then you can go for, for uh, again uh, further calculation tabular column 5 here uh, for this experiment you have to do lot of calculation So here tabular column 5 you can see here you have taken corrected distance and then corrected intensity 1 over r square 
then you have to consider here uh, y i as a corrected intensity and 1 over r square as x i then again you have to apply this lsf method and calculate uh, the values lsf parameters then you can uh, after getting p q r s t values slope intercept standard deviation and then error in slope error in intercept you can calculate so after calculating you can just plot the graph of one more graph there are four graphs for this experiment intensity corrected intensity versus one over r square so this is also a straight line so after uh, calculating and doing the all the calculation for the all the five tabular columns and uh, plotting the graph you have to do the calculation for source strength of the given source that is uh, bismuth so activity uh, you should note down the value of half life decay constant and then age of the source after uh, writing these values for the given source then this source strength theoretically you have to calculate uh, just use this formula s theoretical is equal to s not e to the power minus lambda t use the value of s not lambda and t and calculate s theoretical s experimental you have to calculate it from the slope that you have calculated from lsf method rd is the diameter of the gm counter radius radiation of the source efficiency of the source m slope slope that you have calculated from the lsf method that is from tabular column uh, fifth tabular column that is slope m how much you get just you should use that slope for the calculation of source strength uh, experimental so they must be near uh, theoretical and experimental values so error in source so you can calculate using uh, the sigma m that is error in slope uh, how much you got here error in slope uh, 174 so here is the value that you have calculated from tabular column 5 so error in slope uh, you can calculate using this formula okay uh, and error in uh, source strength cal you can calculate using uh, this error in slope so these are the calculation of uh, inverse square law and at the end you can write the result here operating voltage slope and intercept obtained by plotting graph of 1 over root of i versus t slope m plus error in slope so then intercept c plus error in intercept theoretical source strength experimental source strength and error in source strength so these you are values of error in source strength you can calculate using the tabular column 5 lsf method that slope you will get from the lsf method so i hope uh, this ex video is helpful uh, for doing this experiment uh, so thank you for watching